Hey everyone and welcome back to Prefusion. I am Anish and today we will start the lecture 4B of Power Semiconductor Devices. So like uh, I thought I will be able to cover everything in one lecture but that lecture went a bit long that's why we took a pause there and we ended up until the theoretical part of SCR about the gate triggering and the forward voltage triggering. So now we'll do the assignment questions, the questions that I have given you homework in the previous lecture. Also we learn about gate characteristics and then we'll solve few questions related to gate characteristics okay so this question i gave you homework so an scr operates at a steady state current of 100 amps in conduction mode so steady state current of the scr is 100 amperes fine when it is on to trigger the scr a 50 microsecond gate pulse is required for the latching current of 60 milliamperes so to trigger the scr right the latching current uh, like the current that needs to like turn on the SCRS minimum current it's 60 milliamperes so okay fine 50 seconds uh, gate pulse due to change in the load the new steady state current is 50 amperes the new steady state current has changed from 100 amperes to 50 amp amperes let's say previously it was r ohms of load connected now it is let's say r by 2 uh, uh, 2r 2r ohms of load connected so obviously the current will reduce to half which of the following should be reconsidered regarding the gate pulse and latching current regarding the gate pulse width and the latching current which should be reconsidered increase in the gate pulse width so will I, will I need to increase the gate pulse width if the load current like steady state load current has changed will I need to increase it uh, like let's say I'm like the device is off again from off state if I want to turn on the device, will I need to increase the gate pulse width? Will I need to decrease the gate pulse width? No change in the latching current, decrease in the latching current. Now, about increase and decrease, right? I cannot comment. I cannot comment in the increase or decrease of the latching uh, gate pulse because it depends on temperature and there, like uh, most probably, there won't be no change. Okay, there will be no change in the gate pulse width. Why? Because latching current. Latching current of the device is 60 milliampere and gate pulse width depends on the latching current as explained earlier. Okay, gate pulse width depends on the latching current. And does latching current depend on the steady state current of the circuit? No, latching current depends on the device characteristics, not the outside circuit characteristics. So I will write here latching current depends on internal. Character Realistics. Okay, not on external circuit. So it doesn't depend whether steady state current is 100, 10, 50. It doesn't depend on that. Latching current, like if I have given your device, right? The latching current should be constant for any load. It doesn't matter. Okay, except it depends on temperature. It depends on temperature. Just hold on depends on temperature doping concentration doping and few other device parameters but those we are not changing here okay just a steady state current has been changed so obviously there will be no change in the latching current latching current will remain same it doesn't matter if my steady state current is 1000 amperes 10 amperes 50 amperes up until it is rated okay the anode to cathode current is under the rated condition of the device which i have specified then there will be no change in the latching current and the device won't be damaged okay so there will be no change why because latching current depends on these parameters not on the external circuit parameters i hope you got the point here so let's solve this next question which of the following base defines the holding current in in a scr holding current of scr which of the following the minimum anode current required to maintain the scr in the on state yeah it talks about the when the series is in on right the, it is a minimum amount of current that that is required to keep the series in on state which is correct so this option a is correct this is a msq the minimum value of anode current below which the scr may turn off this here will turn off if the series is already on okay so this is also correct the minimum time taken to turn off the scr is equivalent is equivalent to the time taken to match the steady state anode current and holding current the minimum time taken to turn off the scr is equivalent to time equivalent to the time taken to match the steady state anode current and holding current so is time taken to match like the steady state anode current and the holding current if they are both same right that will be the minimum time that for me to make the scr turn off 
to turn off the ACR because let's say my uh, steady state like uh, initial current was 5 amperes anode current I need to like my holding current is 3 amperes so at steady state the holding uh, like the anode current should reach to 3 amperes then only the ACR will turn off and that is the minimum time right if the anode current is below 3 amperes anyways it will be turned off but if it is just at 3 amperes the ACR will be turned off so it is a minimum time taken so correct minimum time taken for my ACR current to reach to uh, holding holding current is the minimum time required to turn off the SCR. The current at which the anode current becomes lower than the holding current causing the SCR to revert to the forward blocking state. The current at which the anode current becomes lower than the holding current causing the SCR to revert to the forward blocking state. So this is also correct. Right? The current at which the anode current becomes lower than the holding current causing the SCR to re it reverts back to forward blocking state if the given that the anode to current voltage is positive. So this is also correct. Below this, the SCR goes to what? Again, forward blocking state. So, given the VAK is positive, then only it will be forward blocking mode or else it will be reverse blocking mode. Okay. So, yeah, these are the few things about the holding current. Now, let's go to the next question. The ACR with a low switching frequency has a latching current of 2 milliamperes at 25 degrees. Provides a steady state current of 10 amperes for a particular converter. If its junction temperature changes to 150 degrees, previously it was at 25 degrees, now it is 150 degrees. What will be its latching current and steady state current from the same converter respectively? So I told you, right? I told you just before here, latching current depends on the temperature. Basically, it depends on the charge carrier concentration. As temperature increases, charge carriers also increase. So charge carrier increase. So obviously, latching current will change. Latching current will change, but will the steady state current change? No, steady state current won't change because with variation of junction temperature, outside circuit parameters won't change, right? The resistor value won't change, which is connected outside the SCR. They are talking about inside the SCR, inside the junction. So I will say external circuit parameters. won't change okay external circuit parameters won't change so obviously what will i say over it i will say that only latching current will change both latching current and steady state current will not change steady state current is depending on the external load okay it is not dependent on the junction temperature of the scr so b option b will be correct then an scr this should be a scr is in conducting state a reverse voltage is applied between anode and cathode a acr is in conducting state a reverse voltage is applied uh, between anode and cathode but it fails to turn off what could be the reason what could be the reason okay uh, so a reverse voltage is applied between the anode to cathode and but it fails to turn off what could be the reason so uh, positive voltage is applied the reversal of voltage is small the anode current is more than the holding current and turn off time is acr is lost so to make the SCR off from the on state to off state, what needs to be done? It needs to go, the anode current needs to go below the holding current. Even if uh, the, like I have applied a reverse voltage, but the anode current needs to go below the holding current. It has talking about, it has failed to turn off. That must be the case that anode current is still more than the holding current. That's why SCR has been failed to turn off, even though there is a reverse voltage applied. So positive voltage is applied to the gate. Now positive voltage is applied to the gate, uh, like it's, some gate current is flowing. So what does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Reverse voltage is small. No, if, even if the reverse voltage is small, then also ACR should turn off. Okay, as seen from the VI characteristics of ACR, the anode current is more than the holding current. So this is correct, right? Because if the anode current is more than the holding current, that means the device will still be in on state as the definition of holding current suggests that if my anode current is more than the holding current, device will be on if it was previously in the on state if it is lower than the holding current then the device will turn off else it will not turn off so that's why turn off time of a series last, last no no this is not the correct one c option c will be correct so these are eac questions and mostly theoretical questions come from eac that's why i'm covering this so that you can also uh, solve you can also prepare for eac as well simultaneously this is also another eac question a thigh resistor requires turn off circuit while transistor does not okay uh, is it is it true a thyristor requires a turn off circuit. Yeah, a thyristor requires a line commutated circuit right, to make the uh, like uh, anode current lower than the low, um, holding current. Then only the circuit will be off in 
line commutated force commutated right natural com naturally commutated they don't need a circuit but in force commutation they need a external circuit in transistor simply if i make the b is current zero the transistor will be off right so in transistor we don't need a external circuit just the with the b is control right we can make the circuit on and off that's why this is a semi control device so one one statement is correct let's come to the second statement the voltage drop of a thyristor is less than that of a transistor it is wrong why because if you observe for a thyristor right there is a pn pn right there are three junctions three junctions for a transistor there is only two junctions right so obviously the drop of a transistor will be less than the thyristor it has tell the it has told the opposite okay so here there are three junctions 3j and there are two junctions so obviously here drop will be less here drop will be more so hence this statement is wrong okay this statement will be wrong the drop of transistors will be less than the volt uh, drop of thyristor it has talked the opposite told the opposite a thyristor requires a continuous gate current again this is false right a thyristor just requires a gate current until which my anode current reaches the latching current then the device has been latched to on state i don't need to provide any gate signal to it so this is wrong a transistor draws continuous base current true bjd transistor draws a continuous base current so 1 and 4 are correct option d will be correct here okay so let's move on to the next question in forward bias portion of the thyristor iv characteristics the number of stable operating regions so how many regions are there if i just go back to that uh, vi characteristic it is very important like you can make a short notes of that you can write every region is mentioned here so i told you at that time when i was explaining that there were two stable regions this was the steady state and this was the steady state region one was the forward on state or the conduction state or this was the forward blocking state or the forward blocking mode but there was another region that is the transition zone this zone was what when it was transitioning from forward blocking state to forward on state or conduction state so this is the unstable region why i have explained to you because the resistance here dynamic resistance here is negative and negative resistance means unstable okay this you have studied in analog electronics so here this table because r is positive over here. again here r is also positive r on dynamic is positive here as well you can see the slope is positive slope is positive but here the slope is negative slope is negative right that's why so this region is unstable one of the region is unstable and two regions are stable or steady state so that is the forward conduction mode and forward blocking mode so this the stable operating regions are for when it is in the forward bias portion it is two one is in the forward conduction mode and forward blocking mode okay forward blocking mode and forward conduction mode so uh, and uh, like when is it, it is in the transition phase it is in the unstable region so now let's come to few numericals these are ec questions and like they give few more theoretical questions so let's come to uh, this type of question this type of question is very important and you should understand everything from here because this uh type of question has come on a gate examination many times and this can come again in gate examination find the minimum width of the gate pulse required to turn on the scr if the latching current of this scr is 4 milliamps that means once the latching once the current of this scr reaches 4 milliamps i can take out this gate right the gate signal is something like this it is like a pulse where i will give it some gate current igo i don't matter uh, it doesn't matter what is the magnitude obviously it will matter uh, in device characteristics it, but uh, we'll assume that once i give this much of a gate current right the device starts to turn on and i need to still provide this gate signal this igo value they will specify i will not i don't know this igo value mathematically this igo value the device uh, makers manufacturers will specify i don't care about this but this time right depends on the circuit external circuit parameters how i will explain okay because i need to get to 4 milliamps of current so as soon as i give this igo current to this scr right to the gate of this scr as soon as i give this igo current to the gate of this scr what will happen the scr will be scr will be on the assumption is scr will be on and current will flow current will start to flow current will start to increase why will it increase i will explain so if i draw this circuit if i just take this circuit this is on right so at t equal to zero igo gate is applied gate is applied if gate is applied then i will assume assumption is scr on immediately so scr has been on now this simply a 
circuit with the inductor and a voltage source so what is this so what is the voltage across the inductor the voltage across the inductor vl equals to 120 volts it is a constant voltage and it can the voltage can change abruptly on a inductor so what is vl we know vl is equals to l dit dt l dit dt we know what happens when a constant voltage gets applied across the inductor this you have been taught in network theory it will be like a ramp function still i can prove it here as well that what will happen is that my current i of t is simply if i integrate on both sides it will be 1 by l integration 120 volts is constant dt going from 0 to t t is any time because this voltage source is always present so what is this inductor it is 0 0.12 and i can take the 120 outside the integration this will be simply t right t so this is like a ramp function so this is uh what are the four minutes so this will be 12 into 10 to the power minus 2 to the gets 100 into 10 to the power minus 2 so this will be 10 raised to the power 4 t okay this will be 10 raised to the power 4 t now just hold on if i am doing everything correct here this is 12 raised to the power minus 2 okay this should be 120 raised to the power minus 3 right oh, yeah 120 this will be 10 raised to the power 3 right 10 raised to the power 3 t now this is my current through the inductor and this is the current through here as well through the SCR as well now I am applying the gate signal and gate signal is applied until this T time when can I re remove it when can I remove it I can remove it when the current through the SCR reaches 4 milliamperes after that I can remove it because then the SCR will be in on state it can't it can't turn off so this is how the current increases okay this is what I was saying that I will explain here later that what happens when the SCR is turned on and how the current suddenly like slowly increases because in continue in analog circuits current can slowly increase it cannot suddenly ch change okay so my i of t has to be i latching that is 4 milliamperes at let's say this let's name this as tg okay at t equals to it will reach 4 milliamperes at t equals to tg so I will replace here everything right i of t i will replace with 4 milliampere that is 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3 equals to 10 raised to power 3 into tg so i can find out tg from here tg will be what tg will be simply 4 into 10 raised to power minus 6 seconds or 4 microseconds okay tg is 4 microseconds uh so yeah this is how uh we solve this circuit basically uh so now like this is how what happens in a circuit right when the acr is present in a circuit and this is how the current increases and like you can say sir uh can i remember this formula that like this will be one by l you can okay but it takes just 20 seconds to de de derive and there are many other formulas that we need to remember in power train so i can say that you it's not it's fine if you don't remember because you can derive it in seconds like you know right when a constant voltage is applied across the inductor it will be like a ramp and you can derive all these things in seconds right so you don't need to remember if you want to you can always but don't need to right don't need to so let's now just i'm increasing the level of the question slowly now a r is also present if a r is present right the current will increase in a slower rate because it was linearly increases now the r is present so bit of drop will happen here and like the rate of increase will be slow so this question is a bit different like the procedure will be same but the answer whatever they, they have asked is different find the state of the scr if the latching current of the given scr is 50 milliamperes so they have told me the latching current of the given scr is 50 milliamperes and at t equals to zero i am applying a gate pulse of igo and i am removing that gate at 50 microseconds so what do i need to understand at t equals to zero i am applying the gate pulse and i am removing at 50 microseconds so does the current through the SCR reach to latching current that is 50 milliamperes before this 50 microseconds if it reaches then the SCR will be on if it doesn't reach 50 milliamperes then the SCR will be off because for the SCR to turn on from off state the minimum current required is the latching current okay so I will assume that I have applied a gate pulse at t equals to zero 
so SCI will be on so I will again copy this gate pulse is applied at t equals 0 so SCI will be on So now what will happen? Now the current will flow and this is simply a series RL circuit. I know the equation to a series RL circuit. You can like this have been derived previously as well. This will be simply exponential. So steady state IL current like if let's say the SCR was on forever. What will the steady state IL current be? So this will be simply short circuit. It will be 100 by 20. So obviously I will do this a bit fast because this has been explained in transient in a very good and detailed manner so I will do all this in fast manner so I hope you have revised your network theory classes as well so IL infinity is 5 and IL 0 obviously is 0 because initially inductor has no flux in it so how can we solve it so basically uh, yeah basically my IL of t or the current I of t right through the SCR as well I of t can be written like this it is 5 into 1 minus e raised to power minus t upon tau what is tau tau is l by r okay so this is 0 0.5 by 20 0 0.5 by 20 so i will write i will I'll, I'll write this later on so let's now derive one thing so what have they told like the current will only increase right current will only increase it will reach to 5 uh, amperes but i have to check at 50 microseconds exactly is it more than the latching current or lower than the latching current if it is more then the scr will be on if it is low less than the latching current then the scr will be off so like this is what micro right this is microseconds so i will write this in terms of micro as well tau in terms of micro as well so it is l l is 0 0.5 this is 20 and i will multiply simply a 10 raised to power 6 and 10 raised to power minus 6 so what is this let me just quickly compute this just hold on let me just quickly compute this what will be this value tau point 0.5 divided by 20 into 10 raised to power 6 so it is 25 into 10 cube right 25 into 10 cube okay so this is my this is my tau right in microseconds this is in microseconds because i want to cancel right t is in microseconds so at t equals to 50 microseconds tau is like uh, like tau is in micro so micro micro will get cancelled that's why i am doing all this manipulations so i of t at t equals to 50 microseconds what is happening so this is 5 1 minus e raised to power minus 50 divided by 25 into 10 cube yeah sorry for the interruption so like uh, yeah i was just uh, computing this so this right comes out to be like i uh, i at i of t at t equals to 50 microseconds comes out to be 10 milliamperes okay 10 milliamperes so uh, basically this current is lower than the latching current latching current was 50 milliamperes but my current is 10 milliamperes so in this width right i need to apply the pulse width for longer duration for it to reach 50 milliamperes it hasn't reached 50 milliamperes so obviously scr will be the state of the scr will be off if i remove the gate pulse just at this point now for the scr to on right how much time do i need i need my for scr so answer will be off scr will be off answer will be off okay answer we have found out let's solve it for extra for how much amount of time i need to apply this gate pulse so that the scr will remain on so we'll write here for scr to turn on for a scr to turn on what will happen for a scr to turn on basically my current i of t should reach latching current 
that is 50 milli amperes so i will equate this with this equation current equation right so 50 into 10 raised to power minus 3 equals to 5 into 1 minus e raised to power minus t upon tau t i need to find out right this tg i need to find out divided by 25 into 10 cube so the tg is in microseconds that is my assumption so now let me just compute this real quick this will be 50 into 10 raised to power 3 minus 3 divided by 5 and then this will get subtracted by 1 and then if i do take the log of this then i take if i take the negative of this and if i multiply 25 into 1000 this will be almost tg tg will be 251.26 microseconds so if i apply my gate pulse until this time right then only my scr will be in on state after this if i remove my gate pulse scr will still be on but before this before this time before this tgo time if i remove my gate pulse this here will be off so answer to this question will be off so like these question also can come okay so yeah this was one of the question let's solve this question this is a gate 206 question and scr having a turn on time of 5 microseconds latching current of 50 milliamperes and holding current of 40 milliamperes is triggered by a short duration pulse and is used in the circuit shown in the following figure the minimum pulse width required for the scr to turn on will be what will be the minimum pulse we required for the SCR to turn on? Like it's the same question. Just I have solved this, right? I have to find the current equation, equate it with latching current. Then only that uh, that amount of for that amount of time, if I apply the pulse width, then only the SCR will be in on state. So I have to assume that the SCR is in on state. Okay. I have to assume that the SCR is in on state. So if the SCR is in on state again at t equal to zero, I will assume that I have applied a gate pulse here. And SCR turns on instantaneously just after applying the gate pulse. Even though we should assume that we should give the SCR time of 5 microseconds that I will say, explain about later on. But for now assume that SCR instantly turns on as a GIF as at t equal to 0 I apply a gate pulse. So this is not gate applied. This is, should be gate pulse is applied right. Gate pulse. Gate. Uh, I can say gate signal. Okay. Here also this should be gate signal, not gate is applied, gate signal. So, uh, so I will assume the gate has uh, like SCR is instantly on. Now again, I will write the current equation. So these type of question you can easily write. This is a question of transient. This doesn't isn't a question of power electronics. This is a question of transient. Can you write the current equation? You can easily write. So what will the steady state current through this inductor? So through this inductor right this current will be what this current is always constant what is this current this is 100 by 5 kilo okay this is, doesn't matter because this 100 volt is applied to both of this so this will be almost 20 milliamperes 20 milliamperes what about this current this current 100 volt is applied across this the steady state current for this right il il of infinity will be 100 by 20 that is 5 amperes that is 5 into 10 cube milliamperes so i just want to write everything in terms of milliamperes that's why i'm doing this fine so now what is this i current because this i current is a transistor current right that is the most important part to me so i current it is equals to il plus this 20 milliamperes which is always constant okay so this it needs to reach the latching current right this it needs to reach the latching current i latch which is equals to what which is equals to 50 milliamperes this needs to reach 50 milliamperes so how much does il need to reach i'll need to reach 30 milliamperes because already the instant when the acid is on 
a 20 milliampere current instantly fools so i need an extra additional 30 milliampere for the transistor current to be 50 milliampere which is the latching current so il of t il of t at t equals to tg must be 30 milliampere okay so this is the case now This is the case. Uh, so, I L of T is this, right? So, uh, like, what is the equation of current? What is the equation of I L of T? I know, I know initial current. I know final current of inductor. That is, uh, final is five milli, uh, sorry, five thousand milliamps, and initial is zero, right? No current will flow. So, this is five into ten cube into 1 minus e raised to power minus t upon tau this time what is my tau can you tell me what is my tau tau is r equivalent upon l right so tau also depends on this as well tau depends on this as well so what is the r equivalent this is short circuit right the short circuit only this source is present so this this register is out of the picture so the tau is only this okay so that's why this is out of the picture so i hope you know i will not explain this how i completed the tau how why is this out of the picture only why is this element so you have to go and watch network theory lectures i will not explain here because though these things have, have been explained very well in our network theory course so yeah so now i will write, write what is my tau tau is simply 20 uh, l by r that is 0 0.5 by 20 again 0 0.5 by 20 it is it is not this is not included right this is not inclu included this is excluded okay and i will write this in terms of microsecond because the minimum pulse width also i will find in terms of microsecond so previously we computed it it was 25 into 10 cube microsecond right microseconds so i l of t how much i l of t i need at t equals to tg 30 so this will be 30 milli and this is also in milli right this is in milli 1 minus e raised to power minus tg upon 25 into 10 cube micro so tg also is in micro so uh, in this type of question right you have to take care of the units so i hope you know how to take care of the units okay these uh, like childhood things things i will not explain in network theory i hope all this have been explained very well so i'll just quickly compute it this will be 30 divided by 5 into 10 raised to power 3 plus 1 ln and a subtraction side this will be 25 into 10 cube this will be almost 150.45 microseconds so your tg minimum gate pulse width needs to be 150. Point four five microseconds okay so your answer will be this now here right what they have assumed is that they have ignored this turn on time so uh, once the gate pulse is applied right the scr may need five microseconds more to exactly be in this on state right but they have ignored that so we'll also ignore that if there was a 155 microsecond option here so we'll add this turn on time and then we'll take that because scr will need another five microseconds to turn off as well turn sorry turn on as well then only this will be totally on okay so they have ignored it and that will be a controversial question because we exactly don't know how much current will flow then what will the initial currents all those things we don't know that's why we're ignoring the ignoring the turn on time so we ignore the turn on time here okay ignore so answer will be v 150 microseconds so let's solve this question this question is very good in like this is a ac transient question as well so this is a very very good question okay so uh, i hope here himanshu has taught you how to solve these type of questions like if the let's say this transistor is on and if a 15 volt is applied to lnc how to write the voltage and voltages and current so thyristor t in the figure below is initially off and is triggered with a single pulse of width 10 microseconds it is given so the gate pulse that has been applied tg is 10 microseconds they, they never talk about the gate current because the gate current that i have to apply is dependent on the spec sheet of the device i don't touch that i just touch the hum for how much time i need to apply the gate pulse because that is dependent on the external circuitry 
the gate current is not dependent gate pulse width is dependent on the external circuitry so it is given that l is uh, 100 by pi c is 100 by pi micro micro assuming latching and holding currents to be zero so the instant the gate trigger is applied it latches on and it can turn off as well because the i latch equals to i holding current is it is ideal it is zero amperes t conducts for t conducts for how much time okay so how will i assume how, uh, how much time t, t conducts the instant at t equal to zero initial of and is triggered a single pulse width with 10 microsecond so at t equal to zero again at t equal to zero scr is triggered on okay scr is triggered on microseconds scr is on right scr is triggered and it is on instantly because like there is uh, it is idle scr it will be on instantly and it will latch on to on state even if i remove the gate pulse it will still be on but still it has told that it is given the gate pulse of 10 microsecond but still it doesn't matter if, even if i would have given one micro or one nano it would have been on now assuming latching and holding the same so the then after that how for how much time scr will be on so like i have told you about natural commutation right in natural commutation what happens the current needs to go below the holding current so here the holding current is zero amperes so after scr is on the moment at which scr turns off will be i equals to 0 amperes right when the current at t equals to t equals to let's say t on um, up until this the device one or i will say t off uh, after this the device is off i the current through the scr that is the series current reaches 0 amperes next time it will turn off again okay and it will remain for a number of off i will explain why i will explain why so for this right i need the current equation so can like when the scr is triggered when the scr is triggered what will happen the circuit will be simply like this there will be an inductor there will be a capacitor c and l i am not writing the exact values right now and Fifteen volts. Okay, so okay, so SCR is on. So basically, a fifteen volt constant constant is applied across LNC, and they have no initial charges. So initially, what will happen? Initially, this capacitor will not let in any voltage change. So this will be like this will be zero volts, and this inductor. The initial voltage across this inductor will be how much? 15 volts, right? The initial voltage across this inductor will be 15 volts overall. And what do I know? Like if you want to solve this intuitively, you can obviously solve this intuitively. If you don't want to solve this intuitively, you can solve with Laplace. So I will, I will explain the intuitive method first, then I will explain the Laplace method to cross verify. So here, right? Initial voltage across the inductor is 15. Initial voltage across the capacitor is 0. So, if the initial voltage across the uh, capacitor is 0 and across this is 15, so initially what should happen? Should it be like uh, we know only L and C are present, so it will be oscillatory in nature, with, it will be only sine or cos. It can't be some exponential, it can't be decaying because there is no resistive component to decay the current or the voltage. So, it will be sine or cos, it can be sine or cos. So, but I know initial voltage across this is some non zero value, but at t equals 0, sine is 0. So this needs to be a function of cos. This needs to be a function of cos. So what will be the value? Value of VL initial, right? VL of t will be something cos value because cos t at t equals to 0 is 1. And the, what will be the magnitude? It will be the, just the amplitude of this cos function, which is 15. Because initial voltage across the inductor is 15. Because this will be short circuit at t equals to 0. At t equals to 0, I will just draw the circuit at t equals to 0. Okay. 
this will be short circuit and this will be open circuit right so this will be vl and this will be this will be short circuit this will be ic so vl will be totally 15 volts so that's why i can write this in terms of cos and can you tell me what will be the this uh, like this will be some cos omega t and what will be omega like we know right for a simple lc right omega naught is 1 by 100 lc this we have studied like this is just bread and butter for us but i will prove it with laplace but obviously you are solving with intuition few things you should know previously as well so omega naught will be 1 by 100 lc this will be cos omega naught t and omega naught is 1 1 by 100 lc so here this will be t by 100 root lc t by 100 root lc so obviously you are solving it intuition it will take you less time but obviously you need to need you need to know more things here need to know more things here okay so vl is this so now from vl can i compute the il yes right l dit dt is l dit dt is vl so vl equals to l dit dt so it will be simply integration of 1 by l v or l dt from 0 to t so now we have to apply initial conditions here as well i will i will, I will explain this will be 1 by l what is vl vl is 15 cos t so 15 will be outside and i will integrate cos t by under root lc with respect to dt 0 to t So this i of t will be 1 by l into 15 into what if I integrate simple cos it will be simply sine and the constant will be divided sine t upon under root lc divided by 1 by under root lc. So we know basic integration and I have to put here 0 and t right t equals to t 0 and t. So if I put here 0 uh this will be zero only and this will be assigned so that's fine that's fine uh, because like uh we will make a quick sanity check i will explain what do you mean by sanity check this will be uh under root 15 divided by under root l by c sine t divided by under root lc okay so here what is the important portion what is the important uh, like crux is that at t equals to 0 the current should be 0 right because the capacitor is uh, like the inductor won't allow any current at t equal to 0 which is correct right the uh, at equal to 0 sine t is 0 so hence this is 0 current that is a quick sanity check whatever we are solving is correct so if i find out the current at t equal to 0 the current is 0 the next time the next time when current goes to zero scr will be off because it will be the current will be equals to the holding current and the scr will be off because there is no gate pulse again so when is that time so sign if you know the sign of t gra graph right so sign of t graph if you know okay sign of t, sign of t graph is something like this So this is minus Vm plus Vm. So at starting it starts with 0 and then increases. Then again at omega t, omega t equals to pi, this goes to 0 again, right? This is sine omega t. So here, right, omega, omega is simply this and t is this, right? So if we equate this with pi, then the current will go to 0 again. So at t by under root lc equals to pi the i of t will be 0 okay so this is what this is t equals to pi under root lc so what is the value of lnc the value of lnc are 100 by pi and 100 by pi micro so overall this will be pi into 100 by pi micro 
so microseconds this will be simply 100 microseconds t will be 100 microseconds so at t equals to 100 microseconds this will be off off will it turn on again so at t equals to 100 microseconds right what will be the voltage can you tell me what will be the voltage across the capacitor the voltage across the capacitor will simply be something like this so if i compute the vc of t why will it be off after that if i compute vc of t what is vc of t vc of t is uh, simply 1 by c integration of i of t dt ic of t right here ic il all are same they are in series so it is 1 by c of ic of t so if i compute the vc of t it will be simply integration of this so this will be again 15 divided by under root l by c l by c integration of sin t so this will be cos t by under root l by c at t equals to 0 and t equals to t plus c okay and this will be uh, multiplied by just hold on there is a 1 by c as well right i have to take care of everything right now so there is a constant so like you can do the integration for yourself uh into and there is a 1 by l by so the lc right lc will go at the top and root lc will go at the top so this under root l, under root l will get cancelled this will be c and this cc will get cancelled only 15 will remain at the coefficient and i have added a constant right i have added a constant c why because at t equals to 0 the current is 0 so that i have to take care of i will explain what do i mean by that so vc of t so not the current sorry vc at t equals to uh, 0 right the vc of t is 0 sorry no current not the current current is 0 also the voltage across the capacitor is also 0 because we replace it with a short circuit so this is 15 cos t by root lc plus c so if i put at t equal to 0 uh, so uh, t equal to 0 vc of 0 is 0 right so if i replace at t equal to 0 this will be what this will be 1 so this will be simply 15 so vc uh, like c has to be minus 15 right c has to be minus 15 then only my vc of 0 will be 0 and that then only it will satisfy so my vc of t will be i will take the 15 common it will be simply uh just hold on if i'm making something okay sorry there is a negative sign here right because if i integrate with from sign it is there is a negative sign sorry for that this will be negative right sorry for that this will be negative then c will be plus 15 that is what i am thinking i was making some mistake this is minus so c will be plus 15 c is plus 15 so this will be 1 minus cos t by under root lc okay so Uh, this is the equation for voltage now what will happen is that the maximum value the voltage at t equals to at t equals to pi right at, at t equals to pi vc is equals to 30 volts because this will be minus 1 and minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 it will be 30 volts now what do we observe if i just draw the circuit here at, at t equals to pi the ac is off right t equals to pi the ac is off So not t equals to pi sorry not at not t equals to pi at t equals to pi under root lc that is at 100, 100 microseconds the circuit is back again like this but this time right the capacitor has some voltage with it this is at t equals to pi under root lc the capacitor has some voltage what is the voltage the voltage is 30 volts okay and inductor has some inductor has zero current so it will be replaced with open circuit or like uh, we can replace it with short circuit as well it doesn't matter because inductor has zero current it is just reached reset and acr will be off acr will be off now at any stage right the anode voltage is always 15 and here this 
even if this provides zero voltage or this provides some open circuit voltage this if it, if it becomes short circuit initially this side of voltage has been 30 volts as well or always right 30 volts so after this right scr never turns on because it is in reverse blocking mode never It is in reverse blocking mode. Okay, so it is in reverse blocking mode. Uh, so it will never turn on. So that's the reason. Now, if you want to go with solve with Laplace, right? If you want to solve with Laplace, you would know you are saying how did you write these equations? How did you do all this? So you can always solve with Laplace. I will just draw this circuit here again. So when the SCR is on, right? When the SCR is on, I can replace L and this is the method two. Method one is this intuition, and method two is with Laplace. So I will not write, write everything here. Just I will write the equations, and the, after that you can obviously do the Laplace inverse and solve for yourself. So this L will be replaced with SL, and this C will be replaced with one by CS. Now what you can do, and this like this is a step voltage, right? Step voltage. So step voltage gets replaced with fifteen by S. Okay, fifteen by S. So simply, what is my I current? What is my I of S current? So my I of S current will simply 15 by S divided by SL plus 1 by CS, which is equals to, I will take the LC common. I will take the LC common. If I take the L, like I will take the L common here, 15 by L, this will be S square plus 1 by LC. Now, if you remember the formula, right? If you remember the formula, if 15 is over here, like there is no S term over here, what will be it? It will be simply a uh, sign formula, right? It will be simply sign because there is no S term over here. There is no S term over here. So, and also the, there is omega naught is this. Um, what is omega naught? It was S square plus omega naught. So, omega naught square is 1 by LC. So, Omega naught is one by under LC. If you couldn't understand what I did, you need to revise your Laplace transform. Okay, so it is one by under LC, and this Omega naught needs to be present at the top as well. So if I want to write this right, if I want to rearrange this, this fifteen by L will be outside into this one by under LC need to be here as well, and to multiply a under LC to make it to nullify it as well. So this is S square plus one by Okay, this is like we're, we're getting out of free running out of space so this will be somewhere here plus 1 by lc okay so this is this will get cancelled and what will happen over here is that this will be simply 15 by just hold on i will take a new page this omega naught I can write in some other place. Not a not a. see and uh, this like this right if I take the Laplace inverse of this what will be the Laplace inverse it will be sin uh, sin omega naught t omega naught is 1 by under root lc so it will be sin t by under root lc so which we find out find out from so okay I will take I will not write it like this so to take the Laplace inverse right, I will take take it to the next page If I take the Laplace inverse, my I of t will be something like this. So like this, we already written here. Right? We have already written it here. This is my I of t. Okay, this was the same expression I said. Now we can derive. Now everything is same. Now you can do right. Do everything whichever one you want to find the capacitor voltage with Laplace. That also you can do. I have solved one of them. Then the procedure and steps are same. Okay, you can follow that. I will, I won't waste my time here. Okay. So this is homework for you. 
to solve with completely with laplace so method 2 was laplace and the first method was intuition simply so in case of uh, this simple a and c the most cases the there is no resistance most cases it is oscillatory it will be is function of sine or cosine okay fine this has ended now let's start with the gate characteristics so here uh, i have told you right we use gate triggering to turn on this scr and all those things generally we place a vg and ij ig and we like uh, plot the gate characteristics in a graph and that is also important to find out what amount of gate current we need to give and what amount of power that will be dissipated in the gate characteristics so uh, the junction can be assumed to have forward bias condition similar to diode so this junction right this p2 and n2 this is like a junction to this okay j3 j3 junction is between this right between the gate and cathode there is a junction p junction uh, this is j3 so there should be p junction j3 not j2 this should be j3 just hold on okay, it won't let me change it so i will write it here anyways so j3 junction is here right between this gate and the cathode so obviously this is like bias condition the junction can be assumed to have forward bias condition similar to uh, the diode because why because a forward voltage is applied and this junction was previously forward bias already in the forward blocking stage i have already explained and as gate voltage increases the gate current also increases similar to a diode right when the diode is forward biased if the if i increase the voltage then the current will also increase helping in the efficient turning on of the scr as the current increases exponentially hence the uh, like scr will turn on very efficiently this has been explained previously now curve one so curve one and two shows the variation in doping levels of p and n layers so what is the case is if curve one is this if my p and n are very highly doped if my p and n are very highly doped then what will happen is that i will need to provide less voltage for the same amount of current so you, you can observe right for the same amount of current in case of highly doped less voltage and for same amount of current for curve two it is lightly doped i have to provide more voltage to flow in the same same current same current right so uh, the gamma or the voltage all this depends on the doping that has been explained in diode characteristics that has been written over here now what we want to find out is the operating point of the uh, scr okay operating point means at what value what voltage like this is a circuit right this is the external circuit that i connect with the gate and the cathode between the gate and the cathode to get the vg and ig okay so this vg and ig is the internal characteristics that is this one right this this one vg and ig is the internal characteristics okay this graph i'm explaining just in a bit so this vg and ig are internal characteristics but how will you get this vg and ig i have to provide an external supply if i provide an external supply obviously it will have a source resistance so this vs and is right are different things but one thing you note here is this ig and is are same ig ig and is are same okay ig and is are same so if this ig and is are same so uh, what will happen is that uh, one thing is for sure ig and is are same okay but how do i find this uh, like how do i find out the operating point like in vjt classes or in uh, a mosfet right, you find out the operating point for what value of the source voltage uh, are this crossing the curves so here this curve i have drawn it upside down just to draw the uh, like load line what is this this is a load line right so at i if ig equal to zero if ig is equal to zero this is open circuit so vg will be what vg will be what simply v, vs right because there is no drop here vg is vs so this is the load line if ig is if vg is zero if it is zero if it is short circuit then ig will be what simply vg by rs right sorry no vs by rs the whole current will flow due to this resistance so i hope you understood this load line this is a linear load line now this is the characteristics of my gate okay this i have explained here this is just a forward bias diode just i have drawn it upside down for our simplicity okay because i need to draw the load line as well so the points at which it is crossing right the curve the characteristics those points will be my operating point because at those point 
the value of ig is matching the value of vg is also matching for this gate and this uh, source as well so the form points at which this crosses this crosses here right for this curve 2 so what i observe is curve 2 was slightly doped curve 2 was slightly doped and i need to provide more gate voltage for flowing the same gate current so more power will it dissipate it right so that's why this is vg max and this is the like this is between this curve and if i moderately dope it then i need to provide this amount of uh like this amount of vg for it to flow and this will be my operating point this will be my ig operating this will be the operating current we will solve one numerical there we will understand this better and vg minimum is this if my uh like pn junction is highly doped i will need lesser amount of gate voltage but do remember this junction is also responsible for reverse bias as well so obviously we cannot dope it very high okay we have to be considered because this p2 and n1 this is the drift junction right drift layer junction so that is very important to us as well for blocking the forward voltage so that is very important we cannot dope p uh, p layer very much okay so i have uh, i have explained i have uh, like i have explained it very well we'll do few numericals there also this will get clear very well uh, okay don't worry about this so this is the characteristics if some graph something like this comes away don't get scared i have tried to explain what this graph means okay just to make you accustomed with the graph i have explained this now mainly there are two type of gate triggering one is the continuous pulse triggering involves applying a continuous gate pulse to ensure acr is triggered and remains out on such type of trigger is preferred for highly uh inner trig load now what do you mean by continuous pulse continuous pulse means the gate current is continuous okay gate current is continuous constant okay gate current is not going uh, uh, like we're not taking it out of the supply the gate current is always present gate voltage source is always present and it triggered and it remains on gate source is remains on so hence what happens is there is huge power loss because it is always on right what do i mean by this this vg operator and ig operator is always present so this gate like i will explain what is the power instantaneous power this p of t what is the instantaneous power instantaneous power that is taken by the gate not due to the source resistance it is vg into ig right so this vg into ig is always present i am not removing this gate i am not removing this gate so what will be the average power what will the average power it will be simply vg into ig okay it will be simply vg into ig because it is constant it is constant just like similar dc power so it is constant so it will be simply vg into ig i am not removing any gate pulse but there is the better alternative that is the pulse gate triggering in which in this right we just involves applying a gate pulse to ensure the scr is triggered and then it turns off basically i turn the gate circuit off okay so here there will be a switch i'll just copy this this is too small no not this delete this and delete this as well so what will happen here is there will be a just hold on huh? this way i can go there this way I can go there there will be a switch here there will be switch here which will be turned off at t equals to what this right at t equals to small t on because after that the scr is like uh, the scr has reached its latching current and i don't need to provide the gate supply so but in this case there is no switch like that the gate current is continuous but here i turn off it so no power get dissipated in the gate so i am preserving my power okay so less triggering power loss so this time what will be the average power if i find out the if i find out the average power right p average will be simply this let's uh, name this current as ig like uh, it's any current ig and this is vg right so i'm just naming now okay i'm just naming now this is vg of t this is ig of t so average power will be area vg into ig into the time like area by total time period so what is the area of the power graph it will be simply a rectangle like this as well but it's 
height will be v0 to ig and its width will be t on only right so it will be t on and divided by total time period total time period is capital t okay t on plus t off okay so capital t is t on plus t off so this is how we will compute the average gate uh current so here what do you see this was i have i have named this as pg max so here this vg into ig term was pg max in the previous case i can see this is a fraction of pg max so obviously the power loss is reduced power loss is reduced and this t on by t right this t on by t sometimes is also mentioned as duty cycle so we'll write this all all of these things here D is T on by T. D is T on by T. Okay. So this right, this I can write. P G P average is P max into D, which is a fraction. So obviously, it reduces. Hence the power loss. The triggering loss also reduces okay so here there are a few questions so what i will recommend is i will just uh, pause the video real quick and i will just give you time to solve and then again i will come back and solve all of these questions right so these are a few questions that i want you to solve and i will just, just take a break and come back to solve all these questions these questions are very good you should solve all of these questions right so i think uh, yeah this is the, like there are four five questions these are very very important questions and that's it so just try to try out this question right and i will take a break and solve these questions Let's start with this question. A thigh resistor is triggered by a pulse strain of 5 kilohertz and a duty ratio of 0 0.4. So basically, how will the waveform look of the uh, gate? So if it means it is triggered by a pulse strain of 5 kilohertz, that means the period of the pulse will be 5 kilohertz. Uh, the uh, period will be 1 by 5 kilohertz, that is 0.2 milliseconds. So <coughs> the waveform will be something like this. Pulse strain. And duty cycle is 4 so the on like duty cycle i've already mentioned here d is t on by capital t so on time divided by total time okay so this is my ig Oh, let's say and this is my gate current this is how i trigger and duty cycle is 0.4 so this, this will be 0.4 t and this will be t right t on by t is 0.4 and your pulse strain is so f is 5 kilohertz so t will be 1 by f <coughs> t will be 1 by f which is 0.2 milliseconds so if the allowable average power is 100 watts the maximum allowable gate power is so what is the maximum allowable gate power so I, okay this was already drawn over here so pg max right here maximum allowable gate power will be pg max correct this has been derived here as well it is a pg max into d so like these are all the, uh, like theoretical questions mostly from esc so these have a weird questions won't come in gate examination so <coughs> here right uh like your P, yeah, they have already mentioned what is the average power loss the average power loss is 100 so 100 i will just directly use the formula equals to duty cycle 0 0.4 into pg max so your pg max will be 250 watts right simply 250 watts nothing much to use brain over here so answer will be option d okay answer option d will be your correct answer let's move on to the next question so in this question for an scr the gate cathode characteristics has a straight line slope of 130 so like the, here they have drawn the gate cathode characteristic, characteristics and the slope at this operating point its slope at this operating point is 130 that means what that means that my vg over ig equals to r on that is 130 okay this is one relation that they have given me then for trigger source voltage of 15 volts so this is 15 volts and allowable gate power of 5.5 watts so if allowable gate power is 0.5 watts that means the uh, basically <coughs> vg into ig will be 0.5 it cannot exceed 0.5 it has to be equal to or less than 0.5 right the value of register r so 
what is this ig so vg by ig i know this and uh, i can replace here uh, i can replace my ig with vg by 130 right 130 equals to ig simply so if i replace this will be vg square divided by 130 will be equals to 0 0.5 so my vg will be what under root 65 so it, it's almost equals to 8 so under root 65 is almost equals to 8.8.06 volts okay 8.06 volts next next what is happening next if you observe here this is the operating point right so i need to find the value of this r i need to find the value of this r how will i find i know vg i know vg i know this 15 ig is what ig is vg by 130 that is 8.06 by 130 i know ig which is equals to this current right so 15 minus vg by r equals to uh, simply 8.06 by 30 130 so i will i will just equate with that so 15 minus vg vg is 8.06 divided by r will be simply equals to ig ig is 8.06 by One thirty. Okay. So what will be my R value? What will be my R value? Plus fifteen into one thirty divided by eight point zero six. Okay. So R value will be here one hundred and eleven point nine ohm. So nothing to explain here. So like the framing and wording of the questions are like a bit different here okay uh, like bit difficult to understand and in gate they will they frame and word the questions very well thought manner but in ESA they don't right so that's why i i think there might be a bit of confusion regarding like uh, this scr gate characteristics has a straight line slope 130 what does it mean it means the slope basically here it means the r on basically uh basically r on of the gate uh resistance seen from the gate terminals so yeah i hope you understood this question let's move on to the next question a thyristor data sheet given 1.5 volts and 100 milliamps as the, as the gate trigger voltage and gate trigger current respectively a resistance of 20 ohms is connected across the gate cathode terminals so across the gate cathode terminals i have a resistance of 20 ohms so i have, I have already drawn the circuit across the gate cathode terminals a resistance of 20 ohms would be present a thyristor data sheet is given 1.5 volts and 100 milliamps as as gate trigger voltage so at this right what will be this so this voltage gate trigger voltage will be and move this 20 ohms over here 1.5 volts and how much is this current 100 milliamperes right 100 milliamperes uh 100 milliamperes uh, so a resistance of 20 ohms is connected across the gate as I mentioned for a trigger supply of 8 volts So this trigger supply is of 8 volts compute the value of the resistance that should be connected in series with trigger supply in order to ensure turn on, turn on. So I need a hundred milliamperes of current. Okay, so what should be the value of R here? So that I get at least 100 amperes of current. So uh, I have to write the equations here. So this is 1.5 volts. Right? So this voltage is 1.5 volts This voltage is 1.5 volts. So here right your let's name let's not name this as ig let's name this as some is okay trigger source current so my is should be equal to this 100 plus this volt uh, this current this current is what 1.5 divided by 20 plus this 100 milliamperes so this will be 0 0.1 correct now what is this is equals to is equals to 8 minus 1.5 divided by r so 8 minus 1.5 divided by r should be equals to this what is this value 1.5 divided by 20 plus 0.1 so this is 0.175 so six point five divided by one seven five so r will be equals to
थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट फोर थ्री ओके सो द वैल्यू ऑफ आर वी थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट फोर वन फोर थ्री ओम्स दैट इज दिस ऑप्शन बी विल बी करेक्टेड सो सिंपली लाइक यू हैव टू ई सी क्वेश्चन देर इज एन मच लाइक मैथमेटिकल थिंग्स हेयर जस्ट यू हैव टू अप्लाई द फॉर्मुले एंड थिंग्स एंड दैट सेट इट दैट सेट सो या दे जनरली डोंट प्रोवाइड डायग्राम सो यू हैव टू मेक द डायग्राम्स फॉर योरसेल्फ दैट इज द ट्रिकियर पार्ट सो फॉर गेट स्टूडेंट्स राइट इफ यू इफ दे नॉट प्रिपेयर फॉर ये सी दे कैन इग्नोर दिस कॉन्सेप्ट बिकॉज लाइक इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग इट डिफिकल्ट टू ग्रास बिकॉज द क्वेश्चन समटाइम्स इज नॉट वेरी वेल फ्रेम्ड इन ये सी एग्जामिनेशन सो लेट सॉल्व दिस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज अ गेट टू जीरो सेवन क्वेश्चन अगेन दिस इज लाइक नॉट ए वेल फ्रेम्ड क्वेश्चन बिकॉज दिस वॉज ए वेरी ओल्ड older year right this was like 20 like 15 years back almost 15 6 18 years back so that's why the framing of the question is not that well written uh, so here right what they have given is there is a 1 is to 1 pulse transformer so there is a pulse transformer which can obviously be used to like uh, for isolation it is a 1 is to 1 transformer because 1 is to 1 transformer is used for isolation purpose only so what it does is it is a pulse transformer so it will uh, it is not a normal sinusoid transformer it will be able to totally replicate whatever there is in the primary to the secondary of a pulse so pulse is given so it will replicate a secondary pulse okay fine so like it's just same as uh, giving pulses directly here what else they have told they have told us the ratings of the acr so these are the uh, ratings there so okay fine we will read this and uh, there is a l and a small resistance with this uh, l at the output and a 200 volt battery is also connected the forward drops of all the transistor here is a transistor slash diodes this is these two are diode this is a diode and gate cathode junction so gate cathode junction also has a drop during all state of 1 volt so this is a also a pn junction right that's why this has also a drop of 1 volts then the resistance r should be so the resistance r right what value governs this resistance r does anode current governs governs this no this anode current is totally independent of this r does the anode uh, this acr voltage no does the gate current yes right because i have to like limit the gate current within certain range and gate current depends on this r so the first thing that should strike in my mind is i have to think in terms of gate current for this so all these are independent of this r but this r is dependent on this gate current so i have to do something with the gate current fine they have given me the maximum and the minimum value of gate current i have to equate with that so for us to equate right i have to understand what can be the maximum value of the gate current what can be the maximum value the maximum value of the gate current is when this pulse transformer this is a 10 volt pulse right so here when the voltage is maximum and then only current will be maximum if the voltage is zero The, uh, the current can never be maximum so what is the maximum voltage that i can get here so this transistor has 1 volts of drop right this transistor has 1 volts of drop so what will happen is this has 1 volts of drop so here in this side it this is total overall this is 10 volts so at the secondary of this transformer i will receive 9 volts i will receive 9 volts so okay just hold on so that is exactly what is written over here this is the, just the secondary of the transformer now at like when the current is flowing ig is flowing right ig max is flowing obviously this diode is like reversed by the diode current will not flow through this okay and this capacitor will be open circuit at steady state all the current will flow through this now if the current flows through this what do you know i know that gate cathode will be on if the gate cathode is on that means there is a drop of 1 volts here as well so there will be drop across the gate and cathode okay there will be drop across the gate and cathode okay so this if this is current is flowing right current is flowing this will be also drop so what can be my so one thing is for sure this is the ig right this is the i i has to be less than ig max because otherwise gate will get damaged and it has to be more than ig mean then only the device will get triggered else the device will not be able to trigger right it has to be in between these two values so first of all i will equate one by one so it has to be less than uh, ig max so what is i i is simply these two drops are there so that is 7 by r has to be less than ig max which is 
milli amperes okay so r is equals to r is less than what let me just compute it real quick so this will be 7 divided by 7 divided by 0.15 which is for r will be not be less because r will go on that side so r will be greater than 46.67 ohms now what about the other case my i has to be greater than ig mean and then only the gate will get triggered else the gate won't be triggered so i is what i is 7 by r ig mean is what ig mean is uh, 100 milliampere which is 0.1 so r will be what r has to be less than 70 ohms okay so which of these options like is correct is if my r is lying between this, this range r will should be less than 70 and more than 46 so only this option is getting corrected this is this is r should be less than 46 right this is not correct it has to be uh, less than 70 again not correct it has to be less than 70 so only option c satisfied so option c will be correct answer because my gear current has to lie in certain boundation so option c is good now what about the next part so they are talking about the output circuit now so the minimum approximate volt second rating of the pulse transformer suitable for triggering the SCR should be so the minimum approximate volt second rating of the pulse transformer okay volt second rating of the pulse transformer suitable for triggering the SCR should be okay so basically what they are asking is that minimum pulse volt setting so what is the minimum volt setting rating so uh, here right they have mentioned also the what is volt setting rating it is the maximum of the product of the voltage and the width of the pulse that may be applied so generally i also don't know what is volt setting but here they have mentioned the maximum uh, volt second rating is the maximum of the product of the voltage and the width of the pulse that may be applied so volt second rating is basically vg max or the transformer voltage maximum times the pulse right t pulse so for how much time i need to apply the pulse when the current in the scr reaches latching current then for that amount of time i have to apply this uh, pulse right so basically what will happen is that uh, what is the equation of the current here i have to write the equation of current in this circuit now so when this current reaches i latching then only i will be able to determine my pulse width that's what we used to do previously as well so i have to determine the i latching so if i want to determine the i latching or just hold on so what is this drop so here right there is a drop of one volt for this scr okay and there is a register and there is an inductor so there is a series rl circuit and there is a one volt drop because this scr will be turned on and the equation of the current will be what so my i l in infinity will be simply 199 because that was 200 volts 199 by 1 ohms only and il0 is simply 0 right because initially there is no flux so what is the equation of the current equation of the current il equals to 199 1 minus e raised to power minus t upon tau where tau is l by r so r is 1 l is i think l is uh, 150 milli henry so t will be 150 milli seconds t will be 150 milli seconds so il is this okay so now uh, like how to find out t pulse t pulse will be simply at when il of t at t equals to t pulse it should be able to reach my latching current i latching latching current is 250 milliamperes i think yeah it is 250 milliamperes so this is a very good question 250 milliamperes so i'll just equate this now this is, has become the conventional question that we used to solve earlier so it has to reach 250 milliamperes so my t pulse t pulse
is 250 uh, milliampere and this is IL is 199 so this will divide by 199 and then what I have to do I have to like this will be subtracted by 1 then I have to do the ln of this and then I have to multiply minus of tau okay tau is simply in milliseconds 150 milliseconds so what will be this this will be 250 divided by 199 into 10 raised to power minus 3 1 minus this ln of this negative then into 150 milliseconds so this will be almost 0. 0 0.1885 milliseconds okay so what will be the maximum rating so here right one thing you have to notice the maximum voltage that can be like this is just the approximate value the maximum voltage that can be applied across this transformer is 10 volts if this transistor was not applied we apply 10 volt right so i will assume that only so i will apply 10 volts even though 9 volt is across this transformer but still we'll assume it has 10 volts just for approximation purpose so volt second rating is 10 into 0 0.1885 milliseconds so it's almost equals to like uh, 1.885 milliseconds or i can write 1885 micro right 1885 micro volt second okay so volt second so it's almost this right 2000 so like i will assume the bigger number here the bigger number is 2000 because this is the maximum rating that the transformer needs to handle so i will assume maximum numbers here only so it will be 2000 so what you could have done is you could have assumed this has 200 volts only ignore this one volt drop then this would have come exactly or almost very near to 2000 i think so yeah the answer will be this a right 2000 micro volt second this should be the volt second rating okay so approximately okay the triggering circuit of a thyristor is shown in the figure okay the triggering circuit of a thyristor is shown in the figure the thyristor requires a gate current of 10 milliamperes the thyristor requires a gate current of 10 milliamperes for guaranteed turn on uh, so it requires minimum current of 10 milliamperes for it to be guaranteed turn on the value of the r required for the thyristor to turn on reliably under all conditions so it needs like here they have given me the I value of ig min as, as 10 milliampere 10 milliampere it needs minimum of 10 milliampere of current so obviously what is the main thing is when the supply voltage will be minimum then only the gate current will be minimum because uh, what is happening is is they haven't provided me with any uh, variation of the gate voltage okay just hold on gate current is 10 milliampere hmm. so minimum gate current it needs is 10 milliampere so they haven't provided me any drop across the gate to uh, gate to cathode voltage so i will assume this has zero drop now if they haven't provided us with any drop so what can be the minimum current what can be this minimum i current minimum current i will be happening when this vb is minimum so this when is this vb minimum i will be minimum when vb is minimum so vb is fluctuating 12 plus minus 4 so it will be minus 4 right so basically 12 minus 4 divided by r must be greater than the i minimum or ig minimum because at least that much amount of current needs to flow always for the uh, like triggering circuit to trigger the scr so it is r must be less than 8 by 10 milliampere that is r must be less than 0.8 kilo Ohms. okay r must be less than 0.8 kilo ohms so the value of r required for thyristor to, to turn on reliably so value of minimum they should have tell, told us the mac, uh, maximum sorry maximum the maximum
so maximum value will be pointed kilo ohm so they haven't told us any like in what unit so i will i will write in simple ohms like uh like i just have written the question because we don't have the question paper for gate 2024 2004 so it will be r has to be r max can be 800 ohms r max can be 800 ohms okay so yeah this is basically these are the all the questions that can be asked in gate triggering circuits so i have i have cleared the doubts and most questions like there are more gate pu you can solve and this much level only they can ask in gate triggering and in the next lecture right we'll start with different triggering methods and more questions on triggering methods of scr thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video